Welcome to the Life Given Podcast Midweek Special, the Midweek Sprint. Today, I want to talk about a number of things, but the theme that I want to run through this entire episode is where their logic, logic and air quotes, turns to madness. In the first segment at our international level, we're going to look back at uh, just what, how the media treated President Trump when it came to the coronavirus and how the initiative that he took with uh, the travel ban in between China and the U.S. In the national segment, we are going to take a look at how the NFL may be instilling incentives for franchises to hire minorities. And then in the final episode, we're going to look at what the coronavirus madness has uh, in store for restaurant owners. All that and more in this week, this this week's midweek sprint. Welcome to the Life Given Podcast. I'm Isaac Lopez. As many of you may be aware, for those of you watching, uh, yes, I do have a different background behind me. That's because uh, Ruth and I are moving only across town, but still, uh, it's enough to uh, uproot the podcasting room and the podcasting background, so you guys get to see me in a different location. Uh, shout out to. Uh, my parents for letting me steal their library for this recording as we're still getting internet set up over at the other apartment. Um, and for those of you listening, hopefully this doesn't sound any different, even though I'm standing. Normally I sit for the episodes. Uh, and so I, this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad that I get to still host this week's show and um, uh, the midweek sprint. Uh, just a word for uh, later episodes, the finish line, which was initially scheduled for this Saturday, will be airing next Saturday, just due to the busy times uh, that I find myself in over the last uh, over the last week or so. I've just realized that for for all intents and purposes, I just need to flex it another week. So hang with me there, and I promise you that that will be a show worth tuning in for. Okay, but. To get back to today's show, I mentioned how I want to take a look at how the theme, the theme that I want to take a look at is where their logic turns to madness. And about five years ago, I think we were in the middle of discussions uh, talking about where the liberal agenda or the liberal ideologies that uh, many were touting at the time, where they would turn sour, where if they finally run its course what that would look like and what kind of shape that would leave our country in and what kind of shape that would leave our culture in. And I think we have gotten to that place. We are now in the middle of that time. Okay. We've now reached the end, the, the culmination of all their plans and scheming. And this is where we find ourselves in. And that's what I want to look at today. I just want to look at that we're now seeing where their logic, their reasoning, and their argumentation has turned to madness and what that has done to Western civilization as a whole. So for the first segment today, I just want to take a look at uh, where the media has, where, where it was started, where they were able to convince you. I want to start at the base of the issue, and it has come, I think, at the expense of journalism all across the board, okay? I know that there are still uh, objective journalists out there. I know there's still objective news sites out there, and the news that is reported, there are still places that tell the truth and still report facts, actual facts, but we have gotten to the place where uh, journalism, I mentioned in a previous episode, is one of the least trusted institutions in America today, and I think it all started when they started telling lies. And I just want to uh, point out and show that this actually happens, or maybe maybe not lie, but how quickly they will backtrack and how uh, they will drag someone's, they would rather drag someone's name through the mud than actually maybe stop and consider. Because the media has shown that they will uh, pick someone to be the enemy number one. And then they are going to, ride on that argument until the day that it goes sour, until the day that it is no longer even viable for even them to convince themselves that it is worth arguing. And we're seeing that with the coronavirus. And the coronavirus has shown us multiple times what uh, the media is capable of doing, of basically of what uh, they they will distract us with distract us from what the actual facts or uh the the fact that now the coronavirus is just 
a really just the severe flu. It's just severe flu season. And yet they bring it back to enemy number one, President Donald Trump. Now, just for <laughs> clarification, I did not vote for Trump. I didn't vote for him in the 2016, but I'm leaning towards voting for him in 2020. And it's due to the fact that before he was elected, I didn't think he was a very trustworthy fellow. I still don't think he's a very trustworthy fellow, but I, th I think he's done many good things. And one of those things is the action that I think he took on the coronavirus. And at the very beginning, with the limited information that we had, I think I thought that it was reasonable to restrict travel to China. Now, this happened toward the end of January, at the beginning of February. If you're able to rewind with me, if you will, uh, there, there were accounts that came out that um, I think the CDC uh, published uh, 10 days before that there is uh, something more worrisome about this uh, form of the coronavirus than originally expected or uh, suspected. And President Trump, 10 days after that, on February 12th, instilled a travel ban. I believe it's February 12th. And right around that time, you started seeing people such as um, former Vice President, President Joe Biden, Senator um, and Senator Bernie Sanders come out and basically just lambast President Trump for what he did. He ba they basically called him racist. They called him his action uh, z xenophobic. And then we also saw many of the news outlets, Washington Post, uh, CNN, uh, really you name it, they all came out and basically said that President Trump was being racist with this. And now, uh, and then fast forward a month, okay? You can go and look at this anywhere. I went and actually looked up and read an article uh, about uh, this on, I think it was Washington Post, uh, but Fox News also reported on it, just kind of poking uh, some fun at their rival with CNN and just talked about where these um, just how willing the the media is to uh, absolutely ridicule and um, uh, sling mud on the name of whoever they have kind of painted as the number one enemy, the uh, number the undesirable number one, right? And uh, now they have come out and basically said that uh, President Trump didn't take action fast enough, and that and that really wasn't President Trump right? It really wasn't him. He was finally just caved and listened to the CDC. And so they'll do anything to twist and to uh, fabricate because that really is an example of uh, telling a lie. It may not be an exact lie, but it is twisting the truth. It is trying to take something that actually did happen and try to twist it to fit their narrative that President Trump is a bumbling fool, that's he, that he's a racist, that he's misogynistic, that he he's all of these things. And on top of that, he is, should not be our president, okay? So they use all these little jabs, little articles that they'll post and weave them all into this one big charge. We need to impeach President Trump. And so that's something that you need to just keep in mind that they will do whatever it takes to get their undesirable number one out of office, out of whatever public arena that they're worried about. And you just need to be more um, aware of the logic that these people have that drives them forward, that drives these uh, big news outlets and uh, media sites forward. And I think once you understand that, that will help you understand and uh, slowly unravel the lies that they tell you uh, that drives their logic forward. And, and so that's where, in this, this one segment, their logic turns to madness. Their logic, their uh, premise that they are operating from is that the fact that they don't like President Trump. And so they started lambasting what he says about the coronavirus initially and uh, what they say really does influence people. It influences their readers. It influences what they think. And those people seeing what CNN publishes thinks, oh, well, President Trump's a moron. Then 
uh, this coronavirus is nothing to be worried about. You know, you have people standing down in uh, Chinatown in New York, I believe, and saying that there's no worries and that we should go all eat there. And now, obviously, I don't think um, there. I'm getting more at the statement of what that person is saying um, rather than making. A, I'm not making a statement about eating in Chinatown. Um, I what I'm getting at is that their logic is driving their, their hatred of someone is driving forward a very uh, harmful premise. And we, you got to be able to understand if you understand uh, a person's driving principle, uh, a first, a first principle, if you will, like, then, then that's something, um, then you will understand why they do what they do. And you'll be able to look through a certain lens and understand the fact that they're doing this and the reason why they're doing this. And I think it can be very enlightening. So next up, we have the national level, okay? I wanna look at the NFL. Now, if you're anything like me, uh, you, you follow uh, football uh, and you have a team and you enjoy rooting for them. And it, it, it's a pastime that's enjoyable, especially when watched with family. Uh, and I, I honestly think it's, it's one of my favorite sports to watch. But uh, a p report recently came out, I think it was from Fox News Sports, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, a report came out that the NFL would be um, requiring more interviews of minority candidates for head coaching and coordinator positions um, uh, due to the fact that I think out of the last 20 coaching hires, head coaching hires in the NFL, only three of them were um, minorities, were a part of minorities. And the NFL takes this as a statement that uh, the uh, that all of the organizations around the NFL are racist, right? So they have to implement rules so that racism doesn't win the day, okay? That's, that's what they fear. And that, that, that's one of their driving principles and why they put uh, a rule like this in place is that uh, people uh, aren't affected by their... It's, it's so that uh, people of minorities, people of color, aren't affected by... Uh, the apparent racism that these organizations and the people that have the hiring power in these organizations probably have, according to the NFL. So that is their driving principle, right? That is what drives their logic forward. And now there's actually rumors of um, the NFL instilling to actually like, uh, they're instilling a rule that they might get the organizations that hire someone from a minority might get draft capital. So they might actually get better. Um, they might actually get compensated for drafting people of color. They might actually get compensated for not, not looking at two people who uh, instead of based off, instead of basing their hire off of uh just the job that these two can do instead of basing it off of if this guy can do the job and is more qualified um, than this guy. Uh, well, no, this guy is black and this guy is white. So we're going to hire this guy who's black so we can get more draft capital and we can hire, you know, maybe get that one star player that we need uh, in the future to make this organization turn around that that's what may be coming down the pike. And does that not seem crazy to you? Does that not seem just uh, utter madness that we have gotten to the point where um, we have, it's almost like a weird reverse racism. That's, that's what this is coming to. They're, this logic of um, like we have taken it a step further because obviously men were created equal in the sight of God. And obviously I'm a white man saying this. So there will always be people that will uh, poke or make fun or say, uh, you have no place to speak. But when it's coming to this point where we're overstepping, I think we can correct, okay? No matter who you are, you can still look and see the flaws or the problems in a plan. And this is the flaws and the problem with this plan because it's racism. Because now people will be, um, this will be awarded for hiring a person of color over someone who's white. That's what we might be coming to in the NFL. Uh, so just keep that on your radar and just be thinking about that. Where, where else in the world right now, where else in our current affairs 
is this happening? Is, is like this, uh, it's happening with phys- feminism as well. You know, like women are uh, trying, obviously women should not be treated like dirt in the workplace. But now we're getting to the place where we're seeing films, women are just replacing men, like the ugly side of men, where men are like pigs. Now women are being portrayed as pigs and it's shown as a good thing. It's held up as the golden standard. And this is where their logic turns to madness. And I hope, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. That's why uh, we're doing our Take Back Current Events Supper Summer is to just realize what is going on out there and take back control of it and take responsibility for it so that uh this logic this madness that is going around on around us can be cured can be healed and we can get out there and show shine the light of christ in a very confused darkness so i just want to pause and uh recommend to you uh uh, our sponsor. But before we get to that, I just want to tell you, uh, explain the reason for why I want to change up how I was doing sponsorships. And now I've only, I know I've only been doing this for about five and a half, five and a half months. We're approaching half a year with this podcast and it's been a blast. Uh, and uh, when I first started out, I started uh, working with the Anchor Podcast and I really appreciate what they're doing and I'd be willing to plug them. I have no issue with plugging them. I have no problems with their company or their app. Um, but the the recording that I had in the middle of many of my podcasts at the beginning was the same stinking recording over and over again. And so I thought to myself, you know, if as I'm trying to build this podcast into something and seeing if people actually want to listen to it, I want to put something in it that will actually connect with my viewers or my audience or my listeners. I actually want to have an ad in the middle that's personalized to them. And that's something that I would feel confident and comfortable recommending to them. And Anchor, I, I feel very confident about, I feel very comfortable with, but I just... Um, I don't have as much background with them. I would rather have the spot in the middle of my podcast to talk about someone that I know and someone's business that I know. And that's Ezra Friedel. This is where Friedel Financial Coaching come, coming, comes into play for the Life Given Podcast. They are our first official sponsor for the podcast, and they are our podcast sponsor for the month of May. And as uh, we've been going through the month of May and I've been able to interact with Ezra Friedel more and more, I know him, I know his family, I've worked with them before, uh, and they are the definition of good people. Uh, and Ezra is one of, uh, is also good people and you can trust him. And this, this is a word from him to you. And I think that uh, it, it, it's such an important time to be taking uh, back finances, just like it is important to be taking back current events. There are so many different variations of uh, this, um, the battles that we face in life. And this is one, this is one that we need to take control of. And here, here's a word from them. Everyone has dreams for what they want the future to look like. However, most of us are held back from achieving those dreams by debt and consequences of bad financial decisions. That is why Friedel Financial Coaching exists, to help you achieve your financial dreams. You can follow us at Facebook, uh, you can follow us on Facebook, or schedule a time to speak with us at uh, our website. And I'll link to those two in the show notes. Uh, But once again, thank you so much for Ezra Friedel and all that he's doing with his financial coaching business. Uh, If you really want to take uh, authority over all of your life, recognizing that current events and financial coaching is a big part of that. Um, I I think that once you recognize that, you will definitely want to contact Ezra Friedel and he can help you with that. And if you want more information, go listen to the last um, finish line show or longer show that happens on every other Saturday uh, and listen to that interview we had with him because it was so good and so enlightening and a lot to take away from that. Anyway, back to the show. So in our final, our final, <laughs> wow, our final segment, it's flown by very, uh, very fast today. And also I'm very tired. So I apologize if this has not been as coherent as I, I would like it to be and as you would like it to be. Uh, but thanks for hanging with me through this. Uh, the, uh, for the local segment, I, there are reports from Moscow Pullman Daily News that there are a number of restaurants that have not opened up yet. Now, under Brad Little's stage, a four-stage plan, we are in the middle of stage two, and you're allowed now to have indoor seating. 
restaurants who were primarily uh, sit-down restaurants can now come back to business. There are a number of businesses uh, across the nation, across the state, five here in Moscow that have yet to open up. Now, they quoted one, um, uh, this one owner that owns Mylena downtown in another restaurant, and he mentioned that they would take another two weeks to open just so that they can take stock of the situation and come up with a game plan. Now, I have no issue with this, but I also know that there are businesses out there that may still be, um, and this is conjecture, right? But um, there are businesses out there, there are people out there operating out of fear, okay? And now I don't want to attribute motive to this restaurant owner. I don't want to do that to any businesses or restaurant owners in the downtown area or across the nation. But I, I've just from personal experience, I've seen people on Facebook, I've talked to people uh, in person that are worried about this virus. And I think... Uh, Plugging back to our first segment, when we were talking about uh, how media sites operate, we're starting to see the effects of the long lasting effects of the coronavirus, even after we have survived through it, right? Even after we've survived the pandemic of 2020, we are still going to be dealing with the side effect of fear and the side effect of panic. And that may keep restaurants in Moscow in Pullman, down in Boise, it might keep restaurants shut down because they're worried about what it would look like if they opened up, or they are worried about the actual effects of the coronavirus, even though statistics are pointing to um, the last time I checked, which may not be the latest updates out there, but I have not seen a like a recent spike. So I, 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 uh, I, I would stake a dollar on what I'm about to say, okay? <laughs> um, that uh, it's really just the severe flu season. And this this is what I want to uh, uh, kind of come back to because I heard this, um, this analogy used for America or for the people of America. And we have gotten to the point where uh, we want the government to pad and protect everything, just like a Midwestern housewife who pads and protects everything and ch you know, uh, child proofs every cabinet and corner and surface of the house so that her baby won't get hurt. And that's what we want the government to do. Okay, I thought that that was such an excellent and apt analogy. That's where we are and that's what we want our government to do for us. That's what we want uh, our leaders to do for us. We want we want to be able to operate in a civilization, and we want our children to be raised in a civilization where there is no harm available to them. Right? We don't want them to get hurt. Now, obviously, that's a very admirable goal. But just like many things, you can have too much of a good thing of a good thing, and that's where we're getting to. We are coming to um, too much of safety. There is too much worry over what might happen. And instead of allowing us to, allowing ourselves to go back and live our normal lives and lead what could be a very happy and fruitful life in, in the year of 2020, we have gotten to the point where we are scared to walk out our front doors. Let me know what you think. Uh, I want to hear everything you guys have to say. Uh, so share it on our visitor post page on uh, the Life Given News. I think you can just go post there. Uh, as we take back current events this summer, just share stories or share an article, share a discussion that you had with someone that you think might prove useful in this dialogue that we're having about current events. And get in touch with me at the, like, at the Life Given and Received at gmail.com, email me your thoughts, uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Once again, remember that the life that you have been given and the life that you have received includes every area of life. Why should current events be the exception? God bless, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>